In this video, we're going to talk about blood transfusions. When I'm talking about blood transfusions, it's, of course it means I'm giving blood to a patient. And so there are two types of blood transfusions that we'll talk about. There's homologous and autologous. Homologous is the typical blood transfusion, which is uh, a donors are giving blood to different organizations and then the blood makes its way to the hospital and goes to a random patient. Autologous is the patient is giving their own blood in advance. Um, so this isn't going to be in a case of emergencies, but say uh, a surgery that is planned, they'll give their blood uh, maybe up to five weeks in advance. Um, it'll be stored and then on the day of the surgery, the patient should have rebuilt their blood by then, uh, naturally with vitamins and whatnot, and then they can receive their own blood. So autologous has the benefits of being uh, decreased risk of transmission of uh, bloodborne illnesses because it's the patient's own blood. So, when we're talking about blood transfusions, there's a few types of blood transfusions you can give. So, it's not always blood. So, well, blood has different components in it. So, you can get whole blood, which is all the components of the blood. And this is beneficial for someone who has uh, acute blood loss because they're losing multiple components of the blood. They're missing the red blood cells, the platelets, um, and the different coag factors, so they get everything. There's PRBCs, which is packed red blood cells. This is just the red blood cells, and so this would be beneficial for a patient that has a uh, low red blood cell count, but they already have platelets and coag factors. So a patient that has anemia due to like diet or chronic kidney disease where they're not producing red blood cells properly, that's who would get PRBCs. Fresh frozen plasma. Uh, plasma is the other part of the blood that has coagulation factors, um, and not necessarily always platelets, but just the other factors. And so this would be good for patients that's having deficiencies with the coagulation factors like hemophilia. And then there's just the platelets. And so if the patients, uh, all the other vitals are looking good, but they have a low platelet count, then they can receive just platelets. All right, when you're talking about blood, it's, uh, compatibility is very important. And so there's uh, the typical ABO, and then there's the RH antigen. So when you see A positive or A negative, the positive and negative is the RH antigen. And so uh, here's just like a quick chart and you can see all kinds of different charts online uh, but the basis is if you're type A then that means your blood has A type antigen so little uh, flags on it saying hey I'm a type A but you have antibodies against the other types meaning if someone else's blood comes in your system it's gonna find B antigens and it's gonna attack it well that's important because your A antigens mean if you go into someone if you receive blood but you have antibodies for A it's gonna find those A antigens and attack it so the general basis here is AB has both A and B antigens and no antibodies. So what this means is AB recipients or AB recipients can receive any type of blood because they have no antibodies in their blood. So they can receive A, they can receive B, and they can receive O because there's no antibodies. Whereas O type, they have antibodies against every other type of blood. So O can only receive from O. It's also important to notice whether they're positive or negative with the RH antigen um, because if you are negative but you receive positive, then you can have reactions as well. So, just a quick summary about the actual uh, process of starting a blood transfusion. You're going to start with large bore IV. Anything smaller than maybe a 20 or 22 will be too small and the blood is going to hemolyze going through the line and it's not going to do any good if it comes and destroyed. You want to run with only normal saline. Normal saline is called normal saline because it matches the amount of fluids in your blood. Uh, and so it keeps it from the cells getting too small or too big and exploding. So only normal saline. You want to get a set of vials right before the blood transfusion. And this is important because 15 minutes after you start, you want to get another set of vials and see if there's any change in case there's a reaction. So you want to start the blood nice and slow and you're going to be in the patient's room for 15 minutes. And before you actually get the blood, you're going to have two nurses to verify that you're giving the proper blood and to the right patient. After 15 minutes, you can increase the speed, but you're going to do another set of vials at that 15 minute mark and see if there's any change. If there's any reactions, you stop immediately or you can call the doctor. At the end, you go ahead and do another set of vials. Uh, typically, doctors have a follow-up hematocrit and hemoglobin. And then uh, you want to continue to monitor the patient after the blood transfusions because not all reactions are immediate. In my next video, we're going to talk about several different types of blood transfusion reactions and what to watch out for and what to do.